So today we're going to look at some Twitter data to try and find some key influencers uh, with the idea of doing influencer marketing or perhaps just trying to figure out who to follow on Twitter for a given subject. And some of the things we're going to find along the way are why Justin Bieber isn't uh, actually a world expert on artificial intelligence or for that matter um, Hot Wheels. So these are conclusions you could draw from the data if you um, had a naive uh, interpretation of the stats. But we have some cool um, techniques um, to help you tune out some of the sort of noise, just working with really raw data. So the data that I have is uh, 25 million tweets. So 1% of all the Twitter feed from the week of Trump's inauguration. And the data is uh, pretty noisy, as you might expect. Lots of kind of text and hashtags and accounts flying around. Um, and we might be interested in trying to just narrow these down to the ones that are the key influences around artificial intelligence or AI. So this is the sort of thing that, you know, um, organizations like this one uh, produce reports on and people are interested in finding out the key influences for a given topic. Uh, what I'll be doing is just cross-checking my results with the results of um, this sort of third-party study just to see if we're kind of drawing similar conclusions. So let's start by trying to figure out what hashtags we're going to use to uh, find people connected to the world of artificial intelligence. So what we're looking at is a visualization of the top um, 50 hashtags on all of Twitter for this week. And obviously Miss Universe was going on at this point in time. And you're perhaps not surprising to see uh, Justin Bieber's fan base here, the Beliebers, um, actually being more popular than Trump, even during Trump's uh, inauguration week. So that's a measure of just how popular Justin Bieber is on Twitter. So if we search for our, our topic, which we assumed was AI, um, then one of the things that um, you see in the search results and the hashtags now are the things strongly uh, associated with AI. and there are some things in here which are useful, things like machine learning and artificial intelligence, um, and then big data, but that's woven in, in between things like um, Beliebers still. So Justin Bieber is still extremely popular for this subject matter. Whereas big data and artificial intelligence, they actually made a long trip up from the long tail, right towards you know, the middle of the long tail perhaps. These things have moved a long way up this ranking list to arrive here in the top you know, fifth position, for example. Whereas Beliebers have stayed pretty much where they were. Um, so that's an indication that perhaps artificial intelligence is more associated than hashtag Beliebers. Um, and there is actually an explanation for why Justin Bieber fans are connected with AI. Um, and that's because if you search for uh, Beliebers and AI, uh, you'll see that AI is actually um, Portuguese, um, so it's Portuguese for the word there, I think. Now, not, of, not all of Portugal likes Justin Bieber, but Justin Bieber is still extremely popular here. Um, so it was pulled out as a top-ranking hashtag. Um, but Justin Bieber is globally popular. It doesn't matter which language you, you picked, you would probably find a healthy mix of Justin Bieber hashtags in there. So that's what the significant terms algorithm is all about. It's trying to identify which of these hashtags, the popular ones, are big movers um, up the list and are not what we call commonly common. So hashtag believers is what we call commonly common, like the word the um, in text. You know, there are many um, things which are extremely popular and lots of things, or even more things which are less popular. And what we're interested in significant terms is looking for the movers. So if we apply that, um, we get a different set of hashtags back. And the top hashtags are now AI, artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, ML. Um, and then we encounter the next problem that we have. So we've got rid of the popular things, the commonly common things. But unfortunately, we now have another form of problem. We have something HW race off. And this is really the result of repetition in the data. If we go and look at the hashtags, and we search for AI, and this time HW race off, which is significantly connected, uh, we'll see the source of where that came from. And that is a single tweet from Hot Wheels, the, the, car the toy car manufacturer, saying, please follow and retweet for a chance to win something. So you get a lot of these type of messages on Twitter. Um, and duly, lots of people then start to retweet, and the same message 
you'll notice the same tweet ID here. It's just retweeted many, many, many times. And if you're doing a statistical analysis of the data, you then might mistakenly assume that HW Raceoff is strongly connected with AI because of this repetition. So this is where we have a feature called the diversification setting. So you can actually say, I want to diversify my search results that I'm looking at on the tweet ID. I don't want any more than, in this case, we might say one uh, tweet that shares the same retweet ID. And that would be a way of tuning out the repetition in the data and correspondingly trimming out some of these kind of noisy tags that lie around in here. So unfortunately, um, this visualization in Kibana does not uh, support diversification settings, um, but the Graph API does. So what I've done in the Graph API, or sorry, the Graph UI, is to include the diversification setting here. And I've said that the retweet ID, I only want to have maximum one of these in my search results. And if for a moment we turn off significant links, then we should find that we should very quickly run into Justin Bieber for any given subject. So if I search for AI, then uh, we do have some machine learning stuff, but again, we run into the, uh, the Justin Bieber uh, supporter fan club. So let's turn significant links on. We have some diversification to avoid the repetition of Hot Wheels. Um, and now we can start to just search for things connected to artificial intelligence and get some intelligent results back. So we are seeing, for example, that AI is strongly connected to artificial intelligence. There's a strong overlap between these two uh, hashtags. And the same is true of machine learning and deep learning and so on. Um, and now that we've kind of defined um, a useful set of hashtags, um, we can then start to look for people who are popularly retweeted about this stuff. So when I click the plus symbol now, having enabled the uh, author screen name, I'm going to find people who are strongly connected to these hashtags. Uh, and these are our influencers. So let's, uh, let's have a look at who we've found. So we've got some examples here of uh, KD Nuggets as an example. So they have 20 tweets um, in, this, in this set and five of them happen to contain AI. And let me have a quick look at is it data science and KD Nuggets. So they had four tweets on that. So they were picked out because of their strong correlation um, with the fact that a quarter of their tweets are related to data science. So we have Kirk D. Bourne, Mike Tamir, KD Nuggets um, as examples of um, accounts that are strongly connected to all these terms have multiple repetition, uh, multiple tweets on the subject matter. Uh, and let's just cross-check these three: KD Nuggets, Mike Tamir, and Kirk D. Bourne, with the uh, the other study that we saw. So they had a different set of results. They had um, a different time period and one million tweets on artificial intelligence and so on. And when they looked at it, they came out with the top three uh, handles as being Mike Tamir, Kirk D. Bourne, and KD Nuggets. So that gives me a good indication of um, the fact that we're actually choosing to pull out some of the key influencers on Twitter um, and finding the strongly related hashtags and so on. So we can uh, benchmark this on other subject matter. So we could, for example, say during the inauguration, one of the things that was being talked about was the idea of building a wall. So that was one of the campaign promises by uh, Trump and sure enough there are a lot of tweets talking about building the wall and also securing the border so secure the border is a hashtag that is commonly associated with build the wall so it's the same idea the same sentiment um, and perhaps a more extreme view here is deport them all and over here we have an unconnected hashtag which is other people with opposite views which is they don't want the wall at all but if we focus in on uh, the people who do want the wall, then we can perhaps validate who it is, what sort of people are actually uh, calling for that and see if they are key influencers or not. So if we hit the plus symbol, we get a few more things strongly connected to this. So deport illegals, no refugees, um, and we can keep walking out these connections, illegal immigration, thank you, Trump. So now we're starting to kind of go off topic, perhaps talking about globalists and elites and stuff. So if we back up with the undo button, um, we can have a look and see if there's any accounts that we might recognize which are strongly associated with these sorts of ideas. 
uh, just to validate that we're actually staying on topic with this stuff. So of these uh, accounts that have come through here, um, I don't have a study into building the wall and who might be advocating that, but um, so I can't cross check with anybody else's independent list of influential accounts, but I can see a couple that I do recognize in here. I'm not surprised to see them. So we do have, for example, Infowars, uh, which are obviously a big site uh, who are sympathetic to these kind of sort of views. And we also have uh, David Duke, the uh, ex-grand wizard of the KKK. He's also obviously advocating these kinds of ideas. So that's a good indication um, that these are, uh, we have discovered accounts that are kind of strongly connected with this kind, these kinds of ideas. So hopefully that's given uh, some examples of um, how to look at Twitter data, some of the settings to use to kind of avoid some of the noise, the popular things, the things that are repeated um, through the use of retweeting and so on. Um, and it'll give you useful tools and techniques to analyze your Twitter data.